If not for myself, it would be for, for mother or for my brother, my younger brother or my kids. Mm. Um, mm. How am I able to make sure that they don't start from zero? Yeah. Because then mean, you're a fool to allow your kids to start at the same point that you did. It's an evil thing. I think it's immoral. It's even in the Bible. Yes. <laughs> well, many who may not ascribe to the wisdom in, in the good book mm. uh, would still agree that it's an evil thing yeah. uh, to, to not do something that advances your kids. So I, yeah. uh, my own personal story, it's one of the reasons I feel the way I do. And I'm so bullish about land, property investments in yeah. general. You know, my mom, and I've shared this story before, I remember when we were young, my, uh, my dad drove us, my mom and my two sisters and I mm. uh, were bundled into the car because mom and dad, mom wanted to show dad a piece of land somewhere mm. uko behind the airport. <laughs> it felt like a three hour drive back <laughs> then because we complained the whole time it was hot. I don't think the car had AC back then. It was a Peugeot 504. Oh no. I loved that car. <laughs> uh, and we're driving on this a black cotton path yeah after the airport there used to be a place called jomo kenyatta club nyamachoma place that mm. people used to drive to on weekends mm. Mm. uh way past that just before milolongo mm. i mean back then it felt like a long way away yeah um and i remember my dad saying something like this is a waste of time there's nothing going on here i remember at some point we were driving behind uh um a bunch of uh, giraffe, zebras, it was wide open space, oh, yeah. there was nothing but acacia trees and black cotton. And you could see, you could see China from there, because <laughs> there's literally, there was nothing <laughs> from, you know, across yeah. the entire expanse. Yeah. Today, that is Yokimao, right? So, despite our mumbling and complaining and, and dad's sort of, uh, mm negative view on the mm. on the place mm. mom went ahead and bought this five acre block of land she paid 50k fifty thousand bobs for that five acre piece of land mm -hmm. uh, it was a lot of money still then, yeah. but not not like the six to eight million shillings you will need for a quarter acre today yeah same place yeah you know and, and so she i don't know what she did she bought it no one knew she owned it. I come back home from, from the States where I'd lived for a while after dropping out of yeah. uh, college. Mm -hmm. And when I was getting married, she sold off a quarter acre piece of her land and gifted the proceeds to us as a, oh. as a wedding gift. It was about 2.5 million shillings. That's the mom I want to become. Right? Say hi to your mom for me. Uh, yeah, hi, mom. Uh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> I will. I mean, and I remember. Me and Jesus. my dad both asked her, okay, so did why didn't you money? buy 10 acres? Like, why did you only oh, buy five? Oh, yeah, sure, now. Right. <laughs> right, so, you know, that gave me the perspective, right? Oh, God. And if that probably would have come in, it would have been like 15, 20 acres. Yes. Oh. I'd be bawling right now. Imagine. I, I, it would be insane. Did you, did you see the, env and the envelope and be like, Mom, mm. where is... Actually, what she did is she, she called me and said, uh, please go and see a lawyer. He's mm. been holding the titles. Mm. Uh, he's found a buyer. Go and meet the buyer, because she was in Webuya at the time with my dad. Yeah. So I went to this lawyer's office somewhere in Upper Hill. Yeah. I, I didn't like him very much. He was a slippery fellow. Mm. But I got to the office and there was a gentleman sitting across the table who said, you know, I, I would like to buy that quarter acre piece of land. Um, here is here's the checks. He gave me a series of checks because mm -hmm. you couldn't write a check for more than a million bobs. Okay. okay. Totaling 2.5 million. And and he, mom had instructed that the checks be written out to me. So I assumed that, you know, I was simply running this errand for mom. Yeah. I'll deposit the tunes and send them to her. Mm -hmm. And she said, that's yours and, and your wife's. Uh, to start off your new life, uh, it's it's a gift from your dad and I, and I think about the impact that made on me coming back home, having no papers, um, 
being a college dropout, no one wanted to give me a job because I didn't have the bona fides um, and trying to settle, yeah. right? That, that money was a huge leg up for us. I have Can no imagine. idea what would have happened if that had not been the case. And in fact, that, that money was some of the seed capital for our first investment. That's in what land. I wanted to ask. Right. You have 2.5 million right now. Yeah. Was your first consideration land? Yes, it was. Okay. I was like, I want more of that. I want to mm -hmm. press repeat as many yeah. times as possible. <laughs> if, I mean, if, if I can shorten the time, yeah. obviously it would be nice, but no one has any control over yeah. that. But I saw it work. And, and, and my, my parents' retirement would mm. be in a, a completely different picture today had mom not made that decision back then, 1989, 1990, right? So that's always my perspective. And mm. I always try to uh, pass along that view to, to people buying land today. Mm. Make it a long game. If things happen sooner, well and good, sell the thing or mm. add more value to it, whatever makes sense and 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 take your your capital gains into something else yeah uh but this issue of buying land expecting to sell it next year uh yeah for silly gains is you. is madness yeah and and i think this is one of the unfortunate reasons a lot of kenyans are busy about buying land mm. they think it's gonna be and that's not the case i mean if i if i chop up a hundred acre block of land into 50 by hundreds like is happening a lot today and you all buy, there's, there's 800 of you with 50 by 100s, and in three years you're all trying to sell, uh, it's going to be very difficult for you guys to sell at all, and even if you do for any decent profit, because yeah. you're, a, you're a buyer's market at that mm. point. Yeah? Mm. So you, you want to have a long-term mentality mm. when you're buying land. And, and so even, even in terms of Malindi, fine, it's a frontier part of the country. The road has just been done. There's no utilities. It's just hot sun, ancient bushes, yeah. tons of snakes because it's unsettled, Hold right? On. Yeah, I mean, that's a reality. And I remember also that um, whenever you drive to the border between Malindi now to the part that goes into Lamo, um, there's huge security because I remember there's a there's a time they had security problems around that area. Yes. So that would also be a consideration. Absolutely, yeah, because of the proximity to Somalia as yeah. Somalia as you go up, yeah. and, and this was during the Al Shabaab heydays yeah. and the, the pirating yeah. situation. In, uh, security has improved vastly now, especially yeah. now there's a there's a bitumen road. Yeah. It's a beautiful road. You'll drive for hours, no mm. traffic decent of speed course. right <laughs> so so improved accessibility yeah. generally tends to improve security okay uh, as well okay um so i would i would not be too concerned about that but i would buy in malindi today yes or that part of malindi yes for the same reasons my mom bought it it's land in Siokimau in 1989 because that's that's always my view and i know either way i'm gonna win mm. either it'll be it'll be a mudaiga that i want to build on and live mm. or the value would have escalated decently enough that I can take my capital gains, pay college fees, yeah. maybe cover a good portion of my retirement, yeah. if not all of it. And yeah. this would be my advice to people in general. Is capital gain what you had just told me about the guy who bought land and then went and took the, the title deed to the bank and was able to give, to be given? Uh, to leverage? No. Yeah. So capital gains is a technical term for your profits. Okay. So what you paid or uh, used to buy the land, mm -hmm. And, and maintain that property in terms of cost, landscaping, yeah. uh, annual rates and rents, taxes, whatever. That's another thing we have no idea about. May I think, yeah. if I'm supposed to just give you 100,000 for a quarter an acre, why are you coming to ask for more, more money? You know, like what are the extra costs? The, yeah, the closing costs. Yes, yeah, so those are two separate things. So capital gains is what the government calls your net profit. So you bought land 10 years ago, you sold it today. All your costs, including your purchase and maintenance mm -hmm. of that property up until now, out of your selling price, that difference is what they call capital gains. Okay. And they tax that, I think right now it's at the rate, uh, there was a proposal to do it at 12.5%. I don't think that passed, but 
you, you pay a percentage of that to KRA right off the bat, right, as a capital gains tax. Now that is separate from stamp duty, which everyone has to pay when you're buying or transferring land or property, any kind of property from one party to another. It's a transfer tax is what stamp duty is and that, that makes up part of your closing costs along with any uh, rates and rents if your title deed tenure calls for it uh, and legal fees to your Jeez. to your advocate who's helping you navigate that madness right so the, and it's not rocket science it's just basic information people need to be aware of yeah. when they start and it's not it's it's also not over the top i mean you're looking at two percent for freehold land stamp mm. duty yeah four percent for for leasehold yeah legal fees are also regulated by the law society of kenya yeah there's a remuneration order all that stuff is on our website uh yeah. you can download it for free or go to lsk's website yeah it's a percentage of the transaction yeah uh starting from 2.5 percent yeah coming down on a graduated scale mm. It's not unreasonable, but people mm. don't know. Yeah. And, and this is how you get into trouble yeah. and are unprepared. So yeah. it's simply a question, like you said, information, information, information. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, you have to bust a move. And yeah. I, man, I wish I had this conversation with someone at your age. <laughs> I have no clue what I was doing at 24. <laughs> I, I think I was trying to get back to school. Uh, any extra piece of change I had, I'd go blow it in the club with friends <laughs> had i started yeah. at your age oh my god I, you know thank you richie <laughs> yeah i'd be i'd be one of those land barons you read about in the, in the papers yeah, yeah. you're introduced mogul yes uh, <laughs> landlord so start i mean <laughs> yeah I, I do acknowledge there's problems in the sector and, and, I, and yeah. i'm sorry that you and your family had to go through what yeah. you did mm. uh, but there's hope yeah and there's tons of opportunities at your level whatever mm. that is mm. if you can't do it on your own mm. get together with others yeah. like-minded and do it together uh, otherwise you get left behind so now the question is if i had if my budget was a hundred thousand that's not enough to cater for all the costs it needs to be like 150 to cater for all the other that accumulate um, that's one.